Here at Inside China Auto, we're better known for bringing you the latest new energy passenger cars from China. But today, we're gonna to take it up a notch, maybe two notches, actually quite a few notches, because the focus of today's video is not a car, it's not even a minibus. It is in fact this, the Verizon G2M. Yes, today on the channel, we're gonna be doing things a little bit differently because not only are we gonna be getting to know this enormous shiny truck behind me, but I'm also gonna take you a little bit behind the technology that powers it as well. See, this might look like an ordinary truck. If you think it's a diesel truck, you'd be wrong. If you think it's an electric truck, you'd be wrong. This truck is actually powered by green methanol. That's what this M stands for here in the name G2M. But before I introduce you to the truck, we're gonna to have to do a little bit of explaining because unless you're a scientist, and I'm certainly not, you might be wondering exactly what methanol is, particularly green methanol. So let's have a little change of scenery and I'll bring you up to speed. This behind me is the world's largest industrial production plant for methanol synthesis by carbon dioxide hydrogenation. Now I apologize, that's a lot of complicated words in a row. So let me try and break it down for you a little bit further. So let's start with methanol. Methanol is essentially an alcohol that's composed of carbon dioxide, and hydrogen. Carbon dioxide, of course, is the gas that we're trying to remove from the atmosphere. Hydrogen is the most abundant chemical substance in the universe. So what we have is two gases. Carbon dioxide, of course, we produce a lot of that in factories, heavy industry, in cars, and of course ourselves. And hydrogen is, well, everywhere, but of course, most famously known for being a major part of water, H2O. This is where the green comes in. You see, carbon dioxide from industry ultimately just goes into the atmosphere, and it's widely believed that it's heating up the planet and causing climate change and natural disasters. We have a lot of heavy industry out there, of course, making things like steel, and concrete, and tarmac. And when we drive internal combustion engine cars, we essentially have the same issue, hence the transition to electric cars now. But as much as we would love to just click our fingers and enter a beautiful utopia of clean industry, and zero tailpipe emissions simply isn't going to happen as fast as that, no matter how hard we try. The world is enormous and complex. Different countries and continents are at different stages in their development cycle, and some things we simply haven't learned how to do cleanly yet. As much as I love a good battery, many of our energy needs cannot be stored in anything other than a fuel. But we can make better fuels. If we had a solution that could take carbon dioxide out of the industrial process before it enters the atmosphere and then combine that with hydrogen to make a cleaner burning fuel for heavy goods vehicles, we'd have ourselves what's known as a green fuel, i.e. a fuel made from the waste elements of another process. That's what green methanol is. In this factory, carbon dioxide captured from the industrial process in the factory across the road is purified and then reacted with hydrogen in a process called water electrolysis. The byproduct of that reaction is oxygen, which of course we like, and a liquid fuel, methanol. This process is called emissions to liquids, or ETL, and can also make use of excess hydrogen produced in other industries, such as in coke ovens, like those across the road, and then be combined with carbon dioxide without the electrolysis. Why is ETL seen as a valuable asset in our drive towards carbon neutrality? Well, because it helps us build a circular economy. Carbon dioxide produced in heavy industry is captured, combined with either byproduct hydrogen or with hydrogen in water through electrolysis, the electricity here coming from renewable energy. It's then converted to methanol in the methanol plant for use in cars, trucks, or ships as a fuel, which then release it back into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. So yes, the carbon dioxide does get there eventually, but it served multiple purposes first, which reduces its impact. More importantly, the methanol that carries it has some significant benefits over your traditional petrol and diesel. For a start, it's cleaner burning than both of those fuels as it doesn't produce any soot. 
It also produces 99% less sulfur oxides, 60% less nitrogen oxides, and 75% less particulate matter. To be clear, it is certainly not an almost zero carbon dioxide energy source, but it is a low carbon dioxide intensity fuel, which simply means that it's not derived from fossils like petrol, but instead from organic waste, biomass, renewables, and circular CO2. It comes with the added benefit of being able to reduce carbon emissions from heavy industry, and not only that, but it's also easy to transport and therefore can make use of existing fuel station infrastructure. Some of the benefits I just mentioned are reasons why the shipping industry is seeing a greater uptake in use of methanol as a fuel, and the reason it's being demonstrated here in China, in Iceland, Israel, and Denmark too, in special trials. Geely, the enormous conglomerate behind Verizon, is also the brand behind this factory. Their investment in this technology in Iceland led to adapting it for use in China, capturing the carbon dioxide and hydrogen from industrial processes and converting them into green methanol. This factory is the world's first 100,000 ton green methanol factory and produces over 110,000 tons of methanol every year. It's said to reduce CO2 emissions that would have entered the atmosphere another way by about 160,000 tons per year. And the indirect reduction is said to be as much as 550,000 tons a year. Verizon, as a subsidiary of Geely, has leaned quite heavily into green methanol as a result and has developed a number of products that run on this fuel. They already mass-produced methanol commercial vehicles with both 11 and 13 litre displacements and have even developed a 1.8 litre methanol range extender power system, which essentially sees an engine charge a battery which then drives electric motors. The heavy-duty methanol trucks can reduce fuel costs by 18 to 32 percent, which if you know anything about the cost of large-scale logistics, is a benefit well worth looking into, fuel costs being one of the largest overheads of any transportation company. In fact, a major Chinese news broadcaster performed a side-by-side -side experiment with the Verizon G2M versus a Mercedes-Benz diesel truck, covering a distance of 274 kilometers from Hangzhou to Tsushi. The G2M consumed 240 liters of methanol, while the Mercedes-Benz truck consumed 98.9 liters of diesel. With a methanol fuel price in China of 2 RMB per litre and diesel at 7.6 RMB per litre, the cost came out as 480 RMB for the Verizon G2M and 752 RMB for the Mercedes-Benz diesel, a cost saving of over 36%. In addition, it was noted that the Verizon truck was also quieter. In Guiyang, where a kind of methanol ecosystem has developed thanks to local government efforts, more than 90% of the city's taxi fleet runs on Geely M Grand methanol cars, which has led to a reduction of 8% in the city's reliance on oil. Those taxis run on 100% methanol, much like the Verizon trucks, meaning they maximize those harmful emission reductions. Back here in Anyang, a fleet of 300 Verizon G2M methanol powered trucks is currently in operation and is said to be reducing CO2 emissions by up to 45,000 tonnes a year over standard diesel trucks. They're also operating right now in Hangzhou for the Asian Games, supporting the event with fuel transportation to make the first carbon neutral Asian Games in history. Green methanol is even fueling the Asian Games cauldron, which is pretty neat. But enough with the science class, let's go and check out more about that truck. Now this is without doubt the biggest vehicle we've ever had on the channel and certainly the only one with one, two, three axles on it. As you can see, it's the European style cab forward design of truck, which means that the cabin is up here and the engine and gearbox are down here under the back. And it's a meaty thing too. This methanol engine produces 338 kilowatts of power or about 453 horsepower, which means that it's not even the most powerful vehicle that we've had on the channel. But as with most trucks, it's not the power that matters, it's the torque. And this thing has got plenty of it. Compared to this, a Hi-Fi Z or a Zika 001 couldn't pull the skin off a rice pudding. This thing can pull up to 40 tons and has a maximum top speed of 89 kilometers per hour, which means that it's both the strongest and the slowest vehicle that we've ever had on the channel. Funny that. Oh, and by the way, on its own, it weighs just under nine tons. These wheels are 22.5 inches and we have 10 of them. And yes, this thing is rear wheel drive, which means all eight wheels here at the back, they're all doing the hard work. At the side here, you can see the methanol fuel tanks, which are 510 and 620 liters in size. That is a lot of fuel. It's worth mentioning at this point as well that methanol is a liquid at normal temperature, which means it's far less volatile than hydrogen, which is a gas. 
It also has a higher thermal brake efficiency than both petrol and diesel, which means that you can use lighter materials in the engine. While we don't have it here, you can still use these as a range extender engine if needed for charging a battery, as in passenger cars, to give that EV experience. Now I imagine you're as eager as I am to get inside and see what kind of luxuries this truck can offer. So let's go and check it out. Climbing up into the truck does take a little bit of effort, but once you get up here, actually the view of the road is pretty good. And actually these seats are not that bad either. They're pretty cushy. You get air suspension under the chairs, which means the suspension of the truck doesn't have to do quite so much work. And also, of course, we do get armrests on these chairs as well. One for me and one for my passenger as well. And you get quite a lot of other stuff in here as well. So you do get a 12.3 inch screen directly ahead of you and a 12.3 inch screen in the middle for your infotainment. You get your manual controls. And of course, trucks are very complicated. So you get a lot of buttons here for things like differential lane changing assist, hill descent and hill climb assist. Also checking that there are no cars in your blind spot. You get more buttons up here to do even more things and a special CB radio so you can talk to other truck people. You also, of course, get a nice sun blind that you can pull down there to make sure that you don't get blinded. But what I like is that everything is bigger in a truck. Check out these stalks. These are absolutely enormous. Now this is actually a gear change stalk. So you've got several gears there, about six gears, plus you can change it into different ranges. So there's probably about 18, 24 gears in here, something like that. This is of course adjustable, so you can bring it a bit close to your knees and not quite so high up. As well, we get big three boxes at the top there for storage because some people are gonna have to live in these trucks for quite a while. So they are gonna need a lot of space. We get space down here for your cup holders. They get space down here that will draw for other bits and pieces and a wireless charger as well. And we get a fridge down here underneath the bed on the back seat. And we do get two beds in here as well. One at the top, one at the bottom. They get lights and plug sockets and things like that to make sure that your trip is nice and comfortable. So that's it for our video about the G2M and methanol fuel. It's been really interesting for me to go to the factory and behind the scenes to see how methanol can hopefully be a part of improving and cleaning up our energy infrastructure a little bit as we try and transition to a better environment. It's also been a nice change for me to be behind the wheel of something that's a little bit bigger than what we usually have, something a little bit unusual. Trucks just like this one are gonna be supporting the Asian Games here in Hangzhou, of which Geely is a sponsor. So if you are watching the Asian Games, do keep your eye out for them. Now you know exactly what they're running on. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And if you do, thank you for subscribing. We'll catch you next time.